expanding uh, on that, their argument of, well, th I mean, that goes back to generals 2,000, 3,000 years ago would say, send in 500 cavalry to lead out the main enemy force of, of, of 5,000. We know our cavalry, this small contingent, will be wiped out, but that's sacrificing a pawn in a chess game. Mm -hmm. And so the rationale is, hey, we kill 3,000, but we save America, but mm -hmm. that's another con game, even if you were Machiavellian and bought into this, because that's not really what they're even doing. Well, the thing with the Arabs and the Muslims is that in most of the world, uh, their countries are very poor, and uh, they're fixated on trying to stay alive and get enough to eat and get enough to drink. And uh, I don't really think that they're interested in world revolution or uh, killing every American citizen in the, in the United States. Uh, the Muslims I've met are remarkably uh, pleasant, uh, solid uh, pillars of the community, uh, but the Americans demonize them. And uh, by their attacks around the world, they, they're, they're pushing them steadily to the, the radical side, saying, well, you know, these people are killing us, these good Christians who believe in Jesus and the Ten Commandments, including the one about thou shalt not kill. Uh, they're, uh, by and large, trying to destroy us and our way of life. But it's worse than that. As you know, you're, you're an educated man, but for those that may not, my film Terror Storm covers it. The Muslims want to be secular. They invented most of the math we have. Our alphabet is Arabic. I mean, if the Arabs are so bad, folks, this is Arabic writing right here. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, this is the you know the ancient alphabet. Yeah. And and uh, you know what we use, or or, or or we be using Roman numerals. The point is, is that they over and over again in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, everywhere use radical Muslims to overthrow secular governments because they don't want first world nations that can have an equal standing. And this is a tool of literal imperialism, uh, of neocolonialism. Yeah. The, uh, the United States supports repressive right-wing regimes in Egypt and in Saudi Arabia, uh, for example. Uh, it, it's the United States that uh, creates a situation in which there are... Uh, Two million or more internally displaced Iraqis, another two million or more uh, uh, refugees, mostly in the Middle East, and then refuses to let the people who work for the American government in Iraq come to the United States. And the few that make it here, they're given the back of Uncle Sam's hand. Well, when you don't care about killing, when you don't care about morals, you are very powerful. Uh, because they don't have any rules. And, and look at the genius of the Hegelian dialectic they use. And this has been declassified. The British really mastered this 200 years ago. And I want you to comment on this, Mr. Mm -hmm. Springman. They fund radical Muslims, and that's come out for 60 years. They give them radical textbooks. They fund the madrasas. The State Department does. They then use them to overthrow those governments. Then they get to even use those radical Muslims to then menace America. So we become a police state. I mean, they... They use both sides of it. it. It's pure genius. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's fear. They, as long as you're afraid of something and you're terrified of something, you'll do anything to save yourself from the evil enemy. And it's it's uh, absolutely astonishing. Uh, you know, the uh, I, I had a German peace activist once tell me that, uh, um, you know, he could see Gandhi... Uh, standing up to the British in India doing a peaceful, nonviolent revolution, but he said that he was convinced that if they tried this in, in uh, the Nazi period, Adolf would have them all killed. So that, you know, you're right. You're, you know, repression, uh, you, you can do anything you want because you, you have power and you simply want to uh, kill people, and if you do so, you, you have the, the upper hand. Well, for those that don't know, the Tsar stayed in power for over 400 years, staging terror attacks. They did it every week, and they'd arrest everybody and arrest their own police and say they did it. Hitler uh, really came to power, got full power, February 27th, 1933, with the Reichstag. He mm -hmm. launched World War II against Poland by attacking his own base at Gliwitz. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same. I, I mean, I remember three years ago, it got a 2004 Army Manual for Special Forces Captains in the Army and this is this is on WikiLeaks. The government admits it's real and says they want to prosecute whoever released it. Teaches <laughs> army captains how to stage terror attacks. I mean, mm -hmm. my God, the, the, they're they're training armies of terrorists. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, there are army captains listening right now who were trained out of stage terror. How? I mean, is that how you win? And 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 what are you fighting for? America is being destroyed. Now they keep uh, arguing that America is a city on the hill. It's the last great hope of the world. It's uh, it's this. It's that. And the other thing. And then all I can see is that it's uh, the Constitution doesn't exist. The principles on which the country was founded have been rejected by the government. And uh, they simply want to stay in power and will do anything and say anything to keep things going the way they are. But the world is waking up. The average American's starting to wake up, but not fast enough. But the world's a lot more awake than our average Super Bowl watching potato head. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. But it, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely terrifying. It's absolutely depressing. The um, go ahead. Now the the you know the, the Americans uh, you know you you have a peace demonstration and uh, you have more people in a snowball fight and in Dupont Circle than you do in a demonstration about justice for Palestine or for ending the war in Iraq or anything else and you know you you have a couple of hundred people whereas a snowball fight can have a couple of thousand and then a, still a crazy cop shows up and waves a gun at him did you see that yeah I saw that and that's the good old D.C. the state of confusion and. Expanding on that, the reason you only have a few hundred people at the G20 is the police came out and attacked anyone on the streets. Yeah. And in Denver, in uh, Canada two years ago, everywhere, the, pol it get, the police dress up like anarchists to beat people up on the news to demonize all protesters. You know what, Mr. Spring, we had you for a full hour, but I was going to have a little bit shorter. Let's do five more minutes sure. on any other tidbits or thoughts you haven't made here on the record to several million people uh, that are listening. Any websites you want to fire out uh, um, and just, I guess all we can do is tell the truth, lay it out, and it is having some success, but not fast enough. We'll be right back with Mike Springman. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Mike. Closing points, facts you haven't talked about, things you want the audience to know. I guess the the one fact that people ought to look at uh, is that the Department of State, the agency that's charged with formulating and conducting American foreign policy, is controlled by the intelligence services, depending on who you talk to. And I've talked to a, a former CIA station chief and a fellow whose last assignment was in the inspector general's office. Uh, somewhere between one-third to one-half or more of the people who say they are State Department officials really work for the CIA or NSA or something else. Uh, and I would suggest maybe, uh, besides your, uh, your own websites, uh, people look at Op-Ed News, uh, Jason Leopold's Public Record, um, Michelle Chosodovsky's GlobalResearch.ca up in Canada, uh, and Barry Zwicker and um, Ian Woods' is GlobalOutlook.ca. Uh, and there's also the Wayne Madsen report that comes out of Washington, D.C. Absolutely. We get Wayne on several times a month. He's scheduled to be on later in the week. Um, you know, the facts are out there. And I think overall there is an awakening taking place. People now have it in their vernacular, false flag, inside job, self-inflicted wound, Reichstag event. Uh, I mean, are you overall somewhat positive that at least people are waking up or do you disagree? to wake up the people who are a bit more progressive and who uh, have a sense of history but by and large the the great mass of the american people are happy with things as they are because it's a fun fairy tale to hear that the islamic boogeyman is going to get you if you don't go through the naked body scanner the only problem is the radical muslim works for cia yeah i mean the people have uh, done studies uh, about uh, iraq and then terrorism and things like this and when they say remember pearl harbor uh, Americans who were interviewed would say, oh, yeah, you know, we don't care what we do to those Iraqis or, or whoever uh, the brand of terrorists of the day is. Uh, we're, we're happy when, when bad things happen to them. Uh, when you talk about um, uh, historical events, such as uh, what happened in Poland or, or uh, maybe in Nazi Germany, then people start to think, well, maybe, you know, it isn't a good thing to uh, uh, declare, as the president did, that we have the right to kill any American citizen if we consider him to be a terrorist. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you spending time with us. Headed up the visa section in Jeddah. Helped expose a lot of key things with 9-11. Mr. Springman, thank you for spending time with us. Have a great week.